In this video, I want to introduce you to the Revit MEP 2013 interface. And I'm going to start, like all good places, at the beginning. With the program open, you can see what we have here is the Recents file screen. Here, we can see some of the recent projects we've had opened. We can open a project, create a new project, or use one of the specific predefined templates to create a new project file. Just below projects, we have families. Again, we've got files that we've recently opened. We can open a family. We can create a new family from a family template. We can create a new conceptual mass or browse Autodesk Seek. Additionally, we have the resources section of the screen. Here we can find out what's new in the program. Click on help. Go to exchange apps and look at the communities that have been provided for our help. So let's take a look and see what happens when I create a new Revit project file. I'm going to click on New. This gives me the option to select the template file that I want to use and either create a new project or a new project template. In this instance, I'm going to create a new project. But before I do that, notice at the top of the screen, we have this message that says recent files. When I click OK to create the new project, this recent files will change and it will change to project one as the file is currently unsaved and it will also tell us the view that we're in. So let's click OK. Now you can see that this is called project one. We've got floor plan zero mech. As soon as I save this file, we will give the file a new project name and you will see the name and the name of the view change as we work through this DVD. So in this quick tour of the interface, I just want to take you around the particular areas that we will be working with so that you're familiar with those areas when I talk about them later. Each of them will be covered in lots more depth as we go through this DVD. In addition to this, and for your quick reference, there is a PDF in the documentation folder showing you these different areas. If you are new to Revit, it may well be a good idea to print it and have it on your desk. So let's take a look around the interface. We'll start with the application button. This takes us to all the file commands and options. As I said, we will be exploring these in much more detail. Then the quick access toolbar. As previously stated, here's the file name and the Info Center. Next we have the ribbon. The ribbon is separated into tabs and each ribbon has panels. You can see here that some panels have small arrows associated with them. These give you access to additional settings. Next comes the Options bar. The Options bar along here is currently gray. But this changes for every tool that you use. If I click on the duct tool, you can see that we now have different options for width and height and offset from the current level. Also with the duct tool activated, you can see that we now have this tab accessible, which is a contextual tab. This also changes for every tool you use. The properties palette, gives us additional information with regards to the tools that we're using. Here you can see that we have different types of ducts we can select. We're given properties of the duct. And these can be changed just by typing in a new figure. I could click on apply, but just dragging out into the drawing area changes that property, as you can see up here in the options bar. Now, looking at the drawing area, Currently, we're in a floor plan. That plan is available to us in the project browser. The project browser is a list of views within the project. We then have the view control bar. This controls the scale, the level of detail, and other properties associated with our view. And finally, at the bottom of the screen, we have the status bar, work sharing, and design options. 
The more you use this program, the more familiar you will become with the interface.